Joining us in the studio is Dr. Thomas von Rintelen, an expert on evolution and biodiversity here in Berlin. The research we just saw in the report was actually made possible by the discovery of the double helix structure of DNA by Crick and Watson six decades ago. Did their discovery really reveal the secret of life to biologists like you? Well, part of the secret of life. Mm. But uh, their discovery certainly made all the exciting developments possible that um, led to the study you just mentioned uh, in this cave in Germany. Mm -hmm. So now we are able, um, because we know the structure of DNA, mm -hmm. um, to use DNA as a tool to unravel um, evolutionary relationships of organisms and to find genes that um, are responsible for certain traits, for characters uh, mm -hmm. of individuals. It could be humans, animals, whatever. And these are the questions that interest us. What, what drives evolution? on the genetic level, um, what drives the origin of species. Mm -hmm. And genes are enormously helpful in answering uh, those questions. Now, you actually work with uh, the species of snails, mm -hmm. especially in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you proceed to answer all these questions mm -hmm. you just posed? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we start from the organism itself. So we don't start from the DNA, because right. the phenomena you want to investigate um, are always at the visible level first. And mm -hmm. then you get interested, and then DNA is a standard tool to answer questions like, when I have species that are closely related, and one is living on rocks and one on wood, and they are feeding on different things, they look differently. How mm -hmm. does this come about? What is driving this? Mm -hmm. Is it ecology? Or has it been a spatial, geographical separation, and they came mm -hmm. back later together and subsequently started to develop into different habitats? Mm -hmm. And you need basically reliable, um, Relation, information on the relationships, and mm -hmm. that's what the DNA can provide. So, so the, the question behind is always how do these different species actually develop? Where did they come from? Why did they develop into two different uh, yeah. branches? It's about what's the origin of species, or more generally, what's the yeah. origin of diversity, diversification? Now, you're also the curator of the DNA collection at the Natural Museum of History here in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's, it's worked to obtain large parts of DNA from uh, animals which have become extinct a long time ago, for example, <laughs> mammoths. You see a chance to bring them back to life? Um, possibly, maybe within one or two decades. And with mammoths, probably the chances are not too bad because they have been well preserved. They have basically died in a deep mm -hmm. freezer. Um, but still, there are technical obstacles. You need um, to get mammoth DNA into elephant eggs mm -hmm. and to bring elephants to carry them and then hope that a viable mammoth com comes out. It sounds very simple, but it certainly isn't. Yeah. Uh, they've also collected um, DNA pieces from Neanderthal man, Neanderthal <laughs> humans. Is there a chance to give them another chance here on Earth? <laughs> I, well, even if there's a technical chance, I'm not quite sure if it would be uh, the thing we should do right yeah. now. Um, but, but what's your opinion on de-extinction programs um, in general? I personally think that we are losing so much um, diversity right now, so many species, and many species that are not iconic, like mammoths, okay. that we should um, work to preserve them, their habitats, um, because we can't resurrect everything that's uh, living on Earth right now. Thanks a lot for the talk, Thomas von Rintelen. Thank you.